Hello, hello guys, welcome! Alright, I'm gonna quickly uh, explain you guys how the team builder is gonna work. We're gonna do like a quick session of team builder. If you do wanna skip the team builder part and just go straight to the battle, you can just watch below and see when, uh, when the battle is and when of course the team building part is. But let me explain for a bit. So, we really wanted to bring Hakamo because people were shitting on it and actually we're kind of shitting on it as well. But it's a fun mom and we wanted to bring it especially because it's a good switching against Terrakion. Terrakion is like super scary for our team. Um, choice band, like choice carve even. Super scary. But Hakamo, for some reason, has 90 base defense and with Eviolite it can easily tank that as well. Uh, like it can tank a CC. Uh, where we can retaliate with Dream Punch, Dragon Tail, or even Iron Defense up just to wall this. It's also very nice for uh, Incineroar, which is, well, great. Like, honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, just being able to wall Incineroar, like, knock off, yeah, that sure hurts. But, like, main staffs doesn't do that much to Hakamo. So, that's great. Uh, the other thing is, well, like, uh, Bolt, possibly Bolton and even Sincino. So, like, it's just. A wall uh, and to annoy there we've got earthquake to hit uh, Incineroar even Boltant uh, and possibly even Gengar then we've got Dragon Tail just to make sure he switches his Pokemon out if we think we need it and then we've got Dream Punch of course if uh, Dragon Tail is mainly if there's like SD Terrakion or something and then Dream Punch of course to heal try and heal back to full uh, not a lot of like spreads as you see we needed the max defense to be sure that we can take on the track here on 1v1 next up we've got nunu nunu is very nice uh because nunu is just a good steel type first off but then uh, with the amount of hp it has we give it an assault vest just to be able to uh, comfortably believe a spec shadow ball from Gengar, for example or even uh, possibly an earth power from gasodon we put 28 speed evs just to make sure we outspeed the Gastrodon as well. Just to make sure that we can kill it with a Power Whip. We've got Heavy Slam, Power Whip, Earthquake, Heat Crash. Because it covers mostly anything. Heavy Slam, Stab, of course. Power Whip for the Gastro. Earthquake, as we said earlier. Uh, I don't know, I haven't mentioned it yet. But like his team is super weak to Earthquake. Like listen, like Terrakion, Gengar, Incineroar, Gastrodon, Appleton, Skarmory, Bolton, Hatterene, Ditto, Sensino. Like... Uh, Skyrim is a switch in for Earthquake and Apple Tennis. That's it. Those two. Well, while Skyrim can be dealt with, with like, for example, Smackdown, Cobra Archer doesn't learn it. But the fun thing about that, like, uh, we've got enough attack to sure chip anything with our defense investments. We can also lift a possible close combat from the Terrakion, which is also nice. But talking about, like, Earthquakes, we got our both Ramakis or Sandwiches. We've got it with Smackdown. Why? Because the main switching for Earthquake is uh, or the Appleton or the Skarmory. Probably is gonna think Skarmory is nice, but with Smackdown, we can make sure that he can never ever be sure of that. We also gave it top, we gave it Earthquake, Smackdown, and Stealth Rocks, Stealth Rocks, because we need it. Gave it max HP, max defense, because honestly, we didn't need that much attack investment, because we hit Earthquake hit so hard and. Right on, it's like a truck, man. And Toxic is actually mainly there for a possible Appleton or Gastron if we it should need it. But like, yeah, honestly, Right on is a great, great Pokemon that we're definitely gonna use. Then next up, we got, of course, our Dragapult. Now this team ha does have a Ditto, uh, which means we have to deal it with it somehow. We don't want it to copy our Dragapult because Dragapult uh, can run through our own team with uh, like a special and physical special uh, side and his physical side so we put substitute on it why substitute uh if your drag pull is behind a substitute the ditty ditto can copy it so that me mean, that means that's a useless ditto we've got a bit of hp investment we've got mainly um enough speed to be sure that we outspeed gengar and um, no wait to outspeed something else Ah, oh, bolted my bad bolted uh then we've got a bit of hp but mainly attack adamant so that we can show that we can go run through his team we gave it a spell tag just to make sure our fan forces hit a bit harder next up we got the blissey blissey of course you're already for the people already uh hooking off like i know our team is fat but like 
we wanted to show you why Blissey should be tier 2 because Blissey is absolutely broke. We've got a soft boil teleport set, which is very nice for uh, being able to keep momentum. Toxic, and we've got Shadow Ball just to be sure that we can hit the Gengar because Toxic hits pretty much anything else except the well, Hattery, then uh, Skarmory, and Gengar. But Shadow Ball does enough, and with teleport, we can always make sure that we can switch to something more safe. We give it full defense investment so that we are able to possibly lift uh, uh, a physical attack as well which would be very nice to have at certain moments. And then we've got the Tang Root. Well, it's a Rocky Helmet set with Synthesis because we wanted to keep healthy. In case our sh uh, Shit Air 5 dies, we can go to our Tang Root and make sure that we can take on the t Terrakion. Well, Power Whip, Poison Jab and Knock Off because it covers everything. Knock Off is just great to be sure that there's always Chip. And also like uh, the Shit Air 5, we're fully defensive because we need it. It's very funny uh, that our even our special wall is fully defensive as well. Bubbles is uh, well fat, so we honestly need that. But that's the team. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye bye. Hey guys, this is probably the only video that's not gonna be recorded during the match, uh, mainly because the commentary and me being tired wasn't a good combination. Uh, also, for some reason, the crazy sound was really quiet, and that's on me. I should have fixed that before I recorded. But I also want to talk uh, about this match. So we went confidently in this match. Let's go out, like look at this. Like we saw the team, we knew that earthquake, like right on, is gonna put in work. But honestly, I'm just gonna show you guys what happened. Let's get to it. All right. Alright, as you see, we let off with the Rhydon and he let off with the Skarmory. Now, we could trade rocks right now, he's probably just gonna rock himself. But what we actually wanted to do, well, what I wanted to do, was Smackdown. So that we can surely go for the next turn for an Earthquake if needed, uh, to see if he knows what Smackdown actually does and then if he switches out. So, right, right ahead, as you see, we go for the Smackdown and it does 12, which is respectable damage actually. Uh, making sure that uh, leftovers do doesn't heal him completely, which is very nice, but that means he's down the floor. And look at his earthquake switchings. There are none. So honestly, we're, he goes for the spikes then. We go for the starter, expecting him to switch. He doesn't, but that means we can just start quaking right now. And as you see, we do 59 stab, no attack investments, adamant. And that is absolutely amazing. We go for an earthquake again, and as you see again, Earthquake obliterates, obliterates 56% on this Gastrodon. And we EV'd it, so it's faster than Gastrodon, and we killed it. And it was, the Gastrodon was made to try and outspeed us, but, uh, probably, but we put a bit of more investment to make sure that we outspeed the Gastrodon, which is really great. So, all right, our opponent does have his rocks and his spike, uh, two layers of spikes up. We only have rocks, but... We're already rid of Gastron, we put Skarmory uh, low, and then comes in the Terrakion. Now this is the scariest Pokemon on this team. We wanted to make sure that we could deal with this somehow. Uh, we caught this and we should live a close combat. But, he goes for an Earthquake, a non-stab move. Uh, doesn't kill us, thanks to Revilite especially. And he takes Life Orb damage. So we know he's Life Orb, can switch moves, uh, but that also means this is a dead Terrakion, because we just Earthquake. And boom, there goes Terrakion again. And there comes uh, Skarmory. We can just smack down again because we aren't losing anything. He whirlwinds, which is fine. Uh, because he whirlwinded, we also have the ability to Earthquake with our Nunu Kapraja. As you see, we have taken quite a bit of damage from the spikes, but uh, just Earthquaking is a safe play here to see to gauge out the damage. Uh, and uh, right now you can see that we actually do less than right on. It's not stab, doesn't have as much attack, uh, which is unfortunate. So we, uh, the possibility to go after this, he probably goes for a roost again. Knowing that he can heal this off, we can go for heat crash, which has 20 more base power. But we want to see how much that did, and it does 50. So it's good enough to keep him low, out of roost. Uh, and we, I wanted to heat crash again. I pressed the button way too quick. The crazy told me to click earthquake uh, in case of incineral switching, which it did. 
and I am very wrong about that. And from here on, I got flabbergasted. So we intimidate, we go for heat crash, we do absolutely nothing. We do get the crit, which is nice, would be nice if we did earthquake though. Uh, we switch out to our Hakamo, because Hakamo actually walls this thing kind of. When it's stabbed, but the hazards are kind of annoying. Goes for the knockoff, we don't really need our violet anymore. It's mainly for the Incineroar, which is fine. Uh, we lose our violet. We he goes to the Gengar. Uh, mm, well, trying to predict that, we just quaked Earthquake because Earthquake is still, as we said, uh, fair play in case he goes for that. Because we wanted to Drain Punch, uh, be crazy, did tell me go for Earthquake, and so we did. Okay, it was the right play, making sure this Gengar goes low. We switch out to Blissey, uh, trying to make sure that we can uh, wall this Gengar, because we didn't want this to be Trick Gengar, but after we saw the Black Sludge, we knew that we could beat this Gengar 1v1 with this Blissey. Uh, he does go for the Trick, so it's not the worst thing. So we didn't expect Trick with Black Sludge, but like it was a good play by him. Um, we just teleported, expecting him to switch out. So that means uh, Black Slush is going to hurt us thoroughly, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. We go to our Dragapult, because Dragapult's actually pretty free here, as you see. Uh, we we can see what we go for. We can just go for Ghost Move, kill the Gengar, or uh, like Ors, um, but we opted to go for a substitute for Ditto. Uh, of course, the Intimidate doesn't work. We want to opt for the uh, Substitute to make sure that we could beat the Ditto every time. Just go for the Dragon Darts, knowing that uh, Incineroar is gonna go for a uh, knockoff. And then, I should we this turn, I should have thought more about this. Because even if we kill the Incineroar, the Ditto is gonna come in. And the Ditto is a scary Pokemon right now for our team, especially with these hazards up. So he switches to... Uh, we have to switch. We switch in Blissey just to check what he goes for. He does go for the Dragon Darts, uh, which means our Tangru is a possible switch in. We have to sack our Blissey because of this. We go to Tangru. Uh, he can freely go to Skarmory, which he does, which is a great play by him. We go for the knockoff, making sure his leftovers don't work anymore. Uh, and then we go back to Ride On. From this point on, I was a bit flustered because. Um, yeah, we lost a Blissey and now suddenly the Ditto was super scary. So I wanted to make sure I could damage a bit with Rhydon. Uh, I just go for the Smackdown. He whirlwinds, of course, making sure that we are uh, put even lower. I go for the Earthquake just for Chip. He whirlwinds again. Uh, then we're back into Dragapult. Uh, and this again is a bad play because we do manage to kill Felix uh, Discovery. The only the problem is the Ditto is gonna come back in. Ditto coming back in. We have Dragon Darts, Shadow Force, and Fire Blast. Has to pick a move. Goes for Dragon Darts, meaning he's stuck with that. We go Tangroot because with the Regenerator we are able to live that. And I believe with the knockoff we would have killed the Dragapult. But we got a low roll <laughs> and he lived. And this was scary because now he has no choice item and is the fastest thing. And he can just kill everything. A uh, fire blast doesn't kill us here. Go for the earthquake. We do manage to kill that, but we've got two Pokemon way too low to be sure to kill the Gengar. So it's really surprising to me. Uh, I played that very bad. I played that super duper bad. And I see that. Uh, I hope in the next coming weeks they're gonna enjoy these battles more. We've already done week two. Um, so uh, I can guarantee you, you will enjoy that way more. But as you see, we went from having 6-4 against, 6-3 uh, against him even, to suddenly losing 1-0. One, uh, one, Meaning Pokemon battles aren't over until they're really over. I've learned my lesson. I'm more patient now instead of clicking buttons. Uh, Be crazy is God forgiving good coach and I hope you guys will enjoy the next week video it's next week because like I really enjoy battling with him and this is actually I've been having the most fun with this league that I've, ever, that I've had in a while so definitely if you want to check it out check it out if you don't don't well that's fair but anyway if you enjoyed this video leave a like 
We will be back for now. We are all in one. It sucks, but we'll be bringing it back.